want to claim Muhammad وسلم, and rightly so, but we forgot that Muhammad وسلم, is a universal figure. So what we did is that we hijacked his universality, peace be upon him. And that is why, for example, he is not as respected out there. And a lot of it has to do with how we Muslims are referring, how we think of him, and also do we take that with us to other people or, we, or do we not. Yes, he came and we chose to follow him, but he is not our messenger only. And also the early Arabs who lived with him, they understood this about him. They said that one time, a man by the name of Uthman ibn Mad'un, a very good friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said so many times, the Prophet came to me and he would say, accept Islam, accept Islam. So he said, I was just very shy and I said, okay, fine, I am a Muslim. He said, I accepted Islam. He said, it did not really penetrate my heart. I just did it out of convenience. He was a good friend of mine and it wasn't all that bad. So I just, fine, I am a Muslim. And then as he is sitting with him one day, he hears new revelation that come to the Prophet, peace be upon him. That Allah commands of righteousness and justice and goodness to kinship. And that Allah forbids fahsha, sexual immorality, والمنكر, any other form of immorality, be it publicized or be it done in privacy. والبغي, Aggression, oppression, exploitation of other people, taking the rights of other people away. And they say, by the way, this is the most comprehensive verse in the Quran. As far as the best manners are concerned, and then as far as the worst manners are concerned. So this is the most comprehensive verse. So Uthman ibn Maz'un, sitting there, he hears this verse and what does he say? He says, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. I bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and I bear witness that you, Muhammad Wasallam, you are indeed the messenger of Allah. And now people are surprised. You are a Muslim. You have said that about yourself before. So he tells them the story. And then what does he do? He runs to Abu Talib, the uncle of the Prophet Wasallam. And he says, Abu Talib, you have to hear this. You have to hear the new revelation that came to your nephew today. And he said, what came to my nephew? So he recites the verse to him, Inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihs. And he hears it, and what does Abu Talib say? He thinks for himself and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, ittabi'u Muhammadan tuflihu. He said, O oh people, follow Muhammad, you become prosperous. Ya ayyuhan nas, ittabi'u Muhammadan fa innahu yad'u ila rashad. O oh people, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for he is calling people to the best that is out there the magnanimity, the tolerance that is out there. And then he said a very beautiful statement. لو لم يكن هذا دين فإنه في خلق الناس حسن. He said what he is preaching, even it may not be religion, and the man may just be an imposter, or a fake messenger, or what have you. He said, even if that may be the case, he said, these are beautiful moral guidelines for people to adopt by. And what we have done at this point is that we have deprived people from these beautiful moral guidelines that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has put out there for mankind. See brothers and sisters, the figure of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is a universal one. And part of what we ought to do as far as our belief is concerned is that we must share Muhammad sallallahu alayhi with other people. And when I say share, we must share the teachings of our beloved Prophet with the mankind, especially nowadays. This man said, B. Smith, he wrote a book about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And what does he say in it? In reference to a point, he's describing the character of the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said he was the head of the state as well as of the church. There was no dichotomy. He was this as well as he was that. And then he said, he was Caesar and Pope in one. Caesar was in charge of the state and the Pope was in charge of the church. And then he goes on to say, he, but he was Pope without Pope's pretensions. Caesar without the legion of Caesar. He said, without a standing army, without a bodyguard, without a palace, 
without a fixed revenue. If ever any man had the right to say that he ruled by the right divine, it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Now this is a man that is so appreciated. People, they look into him and they say, we cannot believe this man. Michael Hart in his book, the hundred most influential people in history, whom does he put out there? The very first person, a non-Muslim, he goes, it was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because he said that wherever you looked, you would see his character or you would see the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Unfortunately, again, what we have done as Muslims is that we have limited, confined our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, to just be an Imam. A person that we emulate only in our prayers, but or not in our moral character. A person that we emulate only in our physical appearance, but not a total embodiment of the person that we want to be like. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah, you had the best of example. No matter what you do, there is an example for you in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are you a teacher? There is an example. Are you a father? There is an example. Whatever you do, there is an example for you in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One time a man came, and as the Prophet, peace be upon him, is distributing the word booty. So he came in to get his share. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, gave him something and he said, Are you okay? Is this, is this good for you? And he said, Ya Muhammad, wallahi ma'adalt wa la ahsant. He said, Oh Muhammad, you have not done righteousness and you have not done justice. Now imagine speaking in such a manner to the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu So the companions are sitting there, they want to get up and beat on the man. How dare you speak like this to our beloved Messenger? The man didn't know better. So the Prophet peace be upon him leave, leave the man alone. You come with me. And he took him to his room. You know, the room of the Prophet would open to the masjid. So he took him inside and he said, and he gave him more. And he said, is this okay? He said, no. So he gives him more and said, is this okay? He said, no, no, it's not okay. And he gives him more and he said, is this okay? And he said, now you have done justice and now you have done righteousness. So the Prophet peace be upon him said, you know, when we were out there, you spoke very ill words about me in front of my companions. And there is something in their hearts against you. So can we go out there again? And I will ask you the same question and you give them an answer. So they go out there and the Prophet peace be upon him asks him, so how did I deal with you? And the man said, oh Muhammad, you are the best. You have done me justice and you have done me righteousness. And then the Prophet, peace be upon him, what does he say? He said, oh people, he said the example of this man and myself and yourself. In this particular setting, he said, is like a person who has a she camel. And the she camel ran away. And people out of the goodness of their heart, they wanted to bring the she camel back to the person. So what do they do? They run after the she camel, but now the camel sees them and what does she do? She runs away from them. So the, the, the more they run behind it, the further they are taking it away. So the man says, the owner of the she camel says, people stop. This is my she camel and I know best how to deal with my she camel. He bends down, grabs something from the floor. Slowly he walks towards the camel and the camel starts walking back towards them. Meaning that if it was a personal insult, that was taken against me, I am not here to defend my personal self. This is not about me, myself and I. There is a greater mission for me out there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called me ar rahmatul muhda that I am the gifted, compassionate mercy that was brought to mankind. And as such, I must be as compassionate with people as possible. Sometimes people do not like religion because of religious people. They say, Islam is good, but not the Muslims. And many times, people who revert back to Islam, they would say, Alhamdulillah, we knew about Islam before we knew about the Muslims. Because if you look into the Muslims, especially those of us who claim and look to be religious, righteous, practicing Muslims, so what happens is that they say that they are very harsh, they are very rough, they are very rigid, and by no means they are a reflection of the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him.